On March 29, 1973, the Military Assistance Command Vietnam shut down. The last American combat troops returned home and the war in Southeast Asia officially came to a close. We have chosen to observe this date by revealing the museum's latest exhibit, featuring the country's first, and as far as we can tell, only Vietnam patch blanket, a project I began in 2016 and completed in 2020. Patches from military service sewn onto a blanket, both the veterans own and those he or she traded and collected during their tour of duty, are a classic form of American folk art dating back to the Civil War that peaked with GIs returning home after World War II. On the balcony above me, you can see a great example of a patch blanket from that war, commemorating Marine units that fought in the Pacific, one of whom was my wife's grandfather, Otto Fiala. For almost 100 years, returning soldiers brought home their government-issued olive drab wool blankets and a variety of patches, ranging from just a few to many hundreds, depending on the individual and their penchant for collecting. Mothers, wives, and sweethearts seeking to commemorate the service of their loved ones and as an expression of their patriotism, often sewed them on the blankets, sometimes quite artistically, and with remarkable patience and skill. Most such blankets were never intended for display, but for use, and thus few of them have stood the test of time. Like the experiences they memorialized, they faded, disintegrated, and have largely been forgotten. Those still in existence are coveted treasures displayed in military museums or preserved in private collections. A few probably remain sealed away in dusty foot lockers and basements and attics, awaiting discovery by great grandchildren several generations removed from the ancestor for whom they were originally created. They are precious, exceedingly rare, seldom seen, and unique to the American military experience. During a tour of the West Haven Veterans Museum in 2015, I saw my first patch blanket, a large, well-crafted World War II specimen festooned with patches and accompanied by a photo of an article about the soldier who inspired it. It's gratifying to me to, today to see there's a similar article that from my hometown paper next to this blanket. So I feel like I'm following in good footsteps. Though the World War II blanket that he created is no longer displayed, having been returned to its lucky owner, I found it compelling and wanted to know more about the tradition it represented. While researching patch blankets, I was surprised that I couldn't find a single example from the Vietnam War, not in any collections nor online. Upon closer consideration, it was clear this was due to the political and social climate during and after the war, which discouraged Vietnam veterans from openly discussing their experiences. <clears throat> after America's withdrawal in 1973 and the fall of Saigon in 1975, the United States moved on and Vietnam became an unpleasant, <laughs> volatile and politically freighted topic that most people, including many who served there, just wanted to forget. For many years, Vietnam was a subject best avoided. Many veterans threw away anything remotely related to their service, including medals, uniforms, and patches. They certainly didn't want to watch TV, read a book, or relax under a blanket emblazoned with patches that, for many, evoked hard times and unpleasant memories. Nor did they want visitors, children, or even their spouses asking questions they weren't always comfortable answering. I sadly concluded that the long, fascinating tradition of making patch blankets had become yet another casualty of the Vietnam War. The absence of even a single blanket commemorating Vietnam troubled and intrigued me. A traditional form of spontaneously produced folk art, of pure classic Americana and a unique subgenre of historical militaria seemed to have disappeared entirely after having been embraced for nearly a century. And so in 2016, I decided to create my own Vietnam blanket to celebrate and honor the men and women who served there from 1946 to 1975, and to revive an art form that had unceremoniously and abruptly been abandoned. The project proved to be much easier conceived than completed, infinitely more complex, involved, and time-consuming than I ever imagined. Over the next five years, from veterans, auctions, estate sales, fellow collectors, and during a 2018 trip to Vietnam, I gathered, researched, and categorized over 750 patches and located an authentic 1967 issue of OD Green GI Blanket on which to display them. 
Most are army patches because there were more soldiers in Vietnam than any other branch of service. But the Marines, Navy, Air Force, and our Arvin allies are also well represented. You may notice that the blanket contains no patches from the North Vietnamese Army or Viet Cong. Though they certainly made sacrifices, were considered worthy adversaries by those who fought them and may deserve a blanket of their own, it is neither mine to make, nor would this be the place to display it. I cherry picked the very best patches from my collection, each of which tells a complex and evocative story and had them sewn in a stylized representation of a shell burst surrounding the U.S. marking at the Blanket Center. The design is intended to evoke the explosive change in the lives of those who volunteered or were drafted, the ferocity of the firepower used in Vietnam, and the permanent and dramatic transformation of American society, which, fractured from the stress and unable to be reassembled, was never again the same. Some of the patches were machine made in the United States in bulk, while others were crudely hand sewn by South Vietnamese tailors who were hired to produce only a limited run. A few were officially issued, but most fall under the category of morale patches, which were designed and commissioned by groups or individuals to commemorate, often humorously and sometimes with a bit of an edge, their particular role or activity. Nearly all were made in the decade between 1963 and 1973. After carefully arranging 325 patches on the blanket to my liking, they were slowly and meticulously hand-stitched by June Fellinger, the wife of a Vietnam-era veteran and a skilled old-school seamstress from my hometown of Monticello, Iowa. It was a labor-intensive process that spanned many months and was nothing less than a labor of love. I spoke to a dozen dressmakers and tailors about the project and none would take it on. It was simply too daunting, but June embraced the concept, understood its significance, and improved upon my original design. Without her assistance and patience, this project could never have been completed. Unlike similar blankets from earlier wars, this blanket is not intended for use, but as an art piece to be maintained in perpetuity in honor of those who serve. It is a relic, both a consecrated shroud for a generation and nation forever transformed by the events it memorializes and a portal through which visitors can travel back in time. Intended to commemorate and educate, it will be displayed wherever it can be seen by veterans, students, and those curious to know more about the Vietnam War. It will remain here in West Haven for the next year, and I hope it inspires others as the process of creating it inspired me. Nearly a half century after the fall of Saigon, the world finally has a Vietnam patch blanket. It is my small way of saying thank you to the men and women who served in Vietnam many of whom paid the ultimate price when duty called, and they stepped forward in the service of their country. Military conflicts, including the Vietnam War, can and must be honestly assessed, analyzed, and when appropriate, criticized, so we can learn from our mistakes, do better in the future, and evolve as a people and a nation. But whether a particular war was good or bad, its motivations pure or misguided, we must always honor the men and women who served. It is their due, and as their fellow citizens, our responsibility. We can do no less. In closing, I'd like to dedicate today's event in this blanket to Major Archimedes Patty of the Bronx, a member of the OSS and the first American in Vietnam in 1945, and Master Gunnery Sergeant Juan Valdez from Oceanside, California, the last to leave the embassy as Saigon fell in 1975 to Captain Floyd Thompson of Bergenfield, New Jersey, and Lieutenant Everett Alvarez from Salinas, California, the two longest held American prisoners of war. To Major Dale Buis of Pender, Nebraska, the first name inscribed on DC's Memorial Wall, and Second Lieutenant Richard Vandegear from Cleveland, Ohio, the last. To Corporal Charles McMahon of Woburn, Massachusetts, and Lance Corporal Darwin Judge from Marshalltown, Iowa, the final deaths in Vietnam. To the 2,709,918 Americans who served in Vietnam, representing 9.7% of their generation, only 610,927 of whom are still alive. 
to the 304,831 Americans wounded in Vietnam, and especially to the 58,318 Americans who died in Vietnam while serving their country. But most of all, I dedicate this event to the veteran who only yesterday, when asked when he was in Vietnam, replied, just last night. This event, this crowd, the museum we're in and the blanket behind me are evidence their sacrifices have not been forgotten. My thanks to those who served in Vietnam from 1946 to 1975, their brothers and sisters in arms who are no longer with us and those present here today who have come to honor their memory. To June Fellinger who transformed an idea into a reality. To my wife, Melissa, for our ongoing support and encouragement. To my colleagues, friends and family, many of whom have traveled far to attend this event. To Mayor Rossi, Representative Borer, and General Lukowski. To Frank Chasney, Robert Ellis, Ed Casey, and Bill Benson of the World Class West Haven Veterans Museum, and its incomparable manager, come up here, <laughs> Arlene de Graham Painter, without whom this is not. <laughs> and to the veterans here present, whenever and wherever you serve, on this, the fifth anniversary of National Vietnam War Veterans Day, I offer you all my sincere and heartfelt thanks. Thank you. Cool.